kind of blinds us when when politicians come out and say all this bollocks mm. about what it costs and what it don't cost. They're getting paid anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm starting to get really angry about this now because it's all a smoke screen. Hi and welcome. I'm Liz Farahardy and welcome to the Soho London Independent Film Festival. And I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Colin Knox and Ray Winston. And we're actually going to be talking about the most incredible film. It's the Rob Knox story, which is such a powerful documentary. And we're over the moon to be screening this at the festival in November. We do almost like everything together. He just took me everywhere he went with him. He was just, he was my best friend. The weird thing about it is that it's happened so many times now. And so your mind is constantly brought up to date, day by day, about another event, another stabbing. It's like the world's gone mad. Colin, I, something I really, really struck me about this film. It's so beautiful how out of something so tragic that you've managed to come up with a, a film that has a message that feels very much like there is potential for change. Is that something that you planned? Did you set out to do that or did that just happen naturally? Yeah, from the very beginning. I mean, the reason for the found the Rob Knox Foundation is, is, was to make change. The, on the night that Rob was murdered, on the following day, we had a press release. All the press were there because of Rob's notoriety in Harry Potter. Yeah. You you go two ways. When you get to a junction, you go two ways. You can either rip the world apart and get angry, blame people and want revenge, or you say, well, let's use this to make a change. And in the first press conference, uh, we actually said, we, we need to make a change of what's happening on our streets with knife crime, knife carrying and murders. So we use Rob's notoriety to help us to put out the message. And the next thing after that was to get involved with ministers, prime ministers, Princess Anne, all sorts of people to get change made. And we thought the next step would be to make a documentary and a ray came on board very early on in a short film that we made called um, Cold Kiss. Would you fucking want something, mate? You go near my kid, you're gonna break your fucking neck, you prick. You fucking mug. Fuck off! Come on in. You who's a big man now, eh? You pussy hole. No, fuck off. Come on, man. Can't you want some here? Seriously. Aaron Truss was involved because that point up. He was the producer at the time with uh, Nerpal Bagul was the director. And then we went on to the documentary. There was the first rendition, which Aaron Truss was not involved in. Right. But we went through that. I didn't like it. It was too blocky. It didn't flow. It wasn't right. It was right in parts, but not whole. And then we got Aaron in, involved, Aaron Truss, and he actually transformed it and made it sort of seamless, made mm. it flow. He brought Rob to life because of the old videos that we had we showed Rob for what he was as a person that was living and breathing. So, yeah, we, we, we set out from the very beginning to make change. Do you think that film is a really good way to be opening up these conversations? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the favorite, my favourite jobs that I've done have been uh, about social points, like nil by mouth, like scum. Heard of us, have you? Yes, sir. And what did you hear? Nothing, sir. Well, I'll tell you here and now, lad, that nothing was not the correct information. You know, uh, they're the films that I enjoy doing because they've got... They've been made for a certain reason, you know? Um, but you can't make every film like that because, you know, you need entertainment. That's why you have Marvel films and that's why you have the King Arthurs and, and things like that, you know? But there are, there are films out there that, especially from the... Uh, the old BBC, you know, when you came for the place for today and, and you, you had the Alan Clarks and the Les Blairs that were coming through and even the Mike Lees to a certain extent, uh, you know, making stuff about social comment. Well, I guess that's where you place the documentary we made uh, about reality because Scum was based on reality. 
you know, Neil My Mouth was based on reality as a real story, but was dramatised. But um, the thing about the documentary, I think we've gone a step further on where it is purely reality. You know, it's this is it. This We're not dramatising it. We're not sitting down and, and playing a scene. The scenes are there. They've already been recorded way back in the past. You know, when you're seeing Rob and then the reality of what's happened is us talking about it. So it's a different concept that's been, you know, kind of taken on further, really. Yeah, no, and it's it, you've done an incredible job with it. Thank you. Um, Ray, I, I wanted to ask you, what yeah. got you involved with it? How did you come on board and why? Well, first of all, I didn't realise I'd met Rob before. I didn't connect the two in a film we done in our in Ireland called Arthur. King Arthur. You know, he's a, yeah, he's a, he's a kid who turns up and you say, hello, son, how you doing? You know, he's only a young boy. And um, when I heard about the murder, I didn't connect him with the boy that I knew, funny enough. I found that out after I joined the calls in a way, you know. Um, but what affected me was was purely the, the, the subject of knife crime, you know, and... I remember years ago, Alan Clark made a film called Elephant. And it was about people being assassinated. It was one assassination after another. And by the third assassination, the third or fourth assassination, you get slightly bored with it. You know, you, you see it. It's like reports in the newspaper. A, a kid was stabbed in Bethlehem Green or a kid was stabbed in Ealing. And, you know, it makes the first time it kind of happens in our modern world, that it's on the front page. And by the time you get two years down the road, three years down the road, it's lost in small print somewhere and it's one after another. And it's almost a replica of the film or the film's a replica of life that the reporting of it just gets boring. We, we kind of shove it under the, the carpet. And, you know, it, we call people that murder people, terror, you know, a, a bombers and things like that, terrorists. But this is a terrorism. It yeah. terrorises people. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have three daughters that I worry about uh, going out. You know, just three young girls who want to go out and enjoy themselves. And I guess you hold your breath every time they go out the door because you can't stop them going out. No. But you don't know who they're going to meet, you know. And for me... Nothing was being done about it. You know, you get politicians who, who, who rattle on about this every now and then when, when an election comes up or anything. But I, I believe it's still getting worse. I don't think it's getting better. I don't think anything's being done. I think our, our documentary is a step in the right direction. But it's about time now that people in the right places started talking about it properly and not just talking about it, doing something about it. I mean, do you think as well that with austerity over the last 12 years, the stopping of all the, the youth centres, all the kind of places for kids to go, parents that are away working, all of that, I think that's a direct correlation? I, I, I think it's a big, big thing about it because in, in a lot of clubs like boxing clubs and youth clubs, uh, community clubs throughout the country, a lot of these kids go to these clubs now and are being educated by some great men who actually do some fantastic work. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can think of my boxing club when I was a kid. You know, we had this, there, there was a, a culture in a boxing club that you was all of one. And you had a pride about being a member of that club and you was taught humanity, you know? And that sounds crazy saying that about a boxing club, but that's the greatest education I ever had. And I think by taking away some of these community centres where these kids go, youth clubs, away from these great men that do great work, I think that's, I think that's a major part in it. I'm not saying that's going to be the cure, but it's a big way forward. Something I've been really impressed with, with your foundation, it seems like you've gone, right, we want to find a way of positively helping children to take a different direction. With that, have I got that right? Is that... Yeah, but also with the foundation, you've got the Rob Knox Film Academy, which is dormant at the moment because of COVID. Yeah. And we have the Rob Knox Film Festival every year. Yes, um, I came so, to that. 
It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Ray, I wanted to ask you, yeah. have, have you ever been affected or anyone you're close to been affected by knife crime before? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, a, member, a member of my family um, uh, was attacked and, uh, and stabbed uh, very close to death. Uh, thank God for the London Hospital saved his life. Um, and it took many years for him to get over it, you know. Uh, that's, we're one of the lucky stories, you know. We've got a survivor from it, you know. But um, other than kind of uh, the news reports, you know, that dwindle as the years go on, you, you hear people, you hear of an area, you, you hear of uh, attacks that never get reported, you know, that's the thing. Uh, so, yeah, there's people I know who are affected by it, you know, not just Collins family, but other families, but, and also my own family. So, yeah. So I know what that does. I know the trauma that brings, you know, um, as I said, we were lucky enough to come out the other side of that, but uh, it was touch and go for a while, you know. Yeah. I'm so glad that it was all right. Well, as all right as it can be. Yeah. yeah. And you're so, you know, it's really interesting what, what you're saying about with the news reports, because this is the thing, isn't it? It's what fits the agenda at the time, what gets reported. And if there's another story yeah. that the government wants to push through, something they're trying to do, so many crimes yeah. get forgotten about. So I just wonder today, and it, it seems very cold of me and very, I don't mean to be, my heart really goes out to the MP's family today, you know, and, you know, because of this attack. But if this is something that's going to wake up his friends, his friends are in powerful places, uh, you know, let's see that something, I hate to say it, something good might come out of this today, you know, uh, and that would be a legacy of the man himself, you know, and probably all the hard work that people like Colin have put in, you know. Uh, so in a way, you know, something may happen. This might wake up the MPs because it doesn't matter who, what party it is, whether it's Liberal, whether it's Labour, whether it's Conservative, whether it's the Communist Party, whatever, you know, they, they, they've all swept you under the carpet. And it's about time now that someone really does And save our children, save our kids, the innocent and the people that actually perpetrate it as well. You know, we need some education out there. We need a way of stopping this because it's affecting thousands and thousands of people. What do you think needs to be done to create change? And to both of you, actually, what, what do you both think? Uh, for me, is you know, you, you get caught with a knife the first time. Um, you get a chance. It's taken away from you. You get caught twice. You get five years. And after that, three strikes and you're out. I mean, that's that's the reality of it for me. Um, and I hate laws like that. I really do, you know. Um, but once is an accident, twice is a coincidence, probably. But three times, no. Nah. What is in your mind is murder. And for me, I think the penalties have got to be high, you know. I don't walk about the street with a knife. I never have. Why should anyone else? But I'll tell you what is harsh, yeah? Burying your son or your daughter. That's harsh. In, in the documentary, I, I don't know if it's still in there, and with Theresa May, saying we will catch these people that commit these crimes. Well, Ray and I have always advocated prevention. Yeah, it's too late Prevent then. Too late to catch them. Yeah. What, what, why, why should we be turning around to families and saying, I'm, I'm sorry about your son's demise, but we found the murderer now? The, it comes down to saving lives. And whether it costs a fortune or it don't, well, at the end of the day, we just want to save lives. You know, we want to stop these senseless, senseless murders, because that's what they are. They're senseless. They're not yeah. about anything. It's about someone who just, as the young with someone at the time, or maybe not, I just don't like the look of someone and they stick a blade in them and kill them stone dead. That's what it comes down to. You know, uh, uh, forgive me, but fuck the money. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it, it really starts to make you angry, you know? Listen, I, is there anything that you want to add? Because I think, you know, I haven't got anything else Not to ask. Really. Is, is anything that you feel no. that, you, that you want out there at all? 
no, I'm just going to go and kick the cat now. I'm going to find the cat and give it a look. 